Good morning and welcome to uh, St. Vidast on Advent Sunday, the start of the church's year. Um, we will be lighting the Advent candle and celebrating the start of the year in the, and looking forward to the celebration of Christmas. Uh, we have our, we've got a few mince pies and some polenta afterwards, uh, if you can stay for coffee. And after coffee, there's a PCC meeting, and after that, hopefully you can join us for carols. We're singing carols at Brendan's house. If you don't know where Brendan's house is, then follow along. That starts at two o'clock this afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins, praying together. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, 
we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all of our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness, and to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, but we now, we now come to the lighting of the Advent candle, and Clemmy has timed her entrance <laughs> perfectly. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. 
when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect. You came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of the Corinthians to the Corinthians. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord, Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after the suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give his light, and the stars will be falling from the heavens, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge each with its work and commands, the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else. He may find you asleep when he comes suddenly, 
And what I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. seated. Advent is a time of foreboding, something transformational, groundbreaking, monumental is about to happen. It's as if we could feel the energy, the tension in the air, like a thunderstorm brewing on a hot and humid summer afternoon. We all feel this individually from time to time, a sense that something is about to happen. This sense can be triggered by big changes in our lives, but even by small things. Perhaps we are coming to the end of our school time, or we are about to start a new job. It may be that we move to a new place. It may be, as in Chardin and Sam's case, marriage. It may be the beginning or the end of an important relationship. We seem to like the idea that our lives are linked to the rest of the world and that we have some sort of antenna that allow us to pick up the transmission of impending change. A sense of belonging, being part of a greater plan and direction which we share with others, perhaps even with the rest of humanity. The ability to anticipate is one of the great achievements of the human brain. Unlike animals with simpler brain structures, we operate anticipation with two parts of our brains, the ancient and primitive amygdala and the more recent and analytical neocortex. The amygdala allows us to respond immediately and with all our energy in risk situations, in a fight or flight reaction. Very differently to this, the operations of the neocortex, in the words of Nobel Prize winning behavioral economist Daniel Kahneman, are slower, serial, effortful, more likely to be consciously monitored and deliberately controlled. They're also relatively flexible and potentially rule governed. So is the sense of foreboding driven by our basic instincts or a result of the sophisticated analytics our highly developed brain performs? Prophets hear angels, hear voices of messengers, even the voice of God. The prophet Samuel, as a boy serving the priest Eli, woke from his sleep in the middle of the night when he heard someone say his name. He ran to Eli, thinking Eli had called him. After this happened three times, Eli realized that God was speaking to Samuel and told him to respond with, speak, your servant is listening. We look for prophets because our brain tells us twice that we need to know about the future, instinctively to avoid impending risk, to either run or fight and analytically as we seek to prepare ourselves to seize opportunity. If there were a woman or a man with a gift to predict the future, what an incredibly valuable person she or he would be to us. Isaiah is arguably the Hebrew Bible prophet most often quoted by Christians. His prophecies seem to speak so very clearly of the coming of Jesus Christ an event that happened some 700 years after Isaiah's death. Isaiah 9-6 is a favorite reading in Advent time. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, 
mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This year, the presence of war, the reality of human killing human, has our anticipation antenna working over time. Is there a sign? Is there a message? Is there a man or woman who can bring peace? What are we to do? How can we make sense of our world and how should we react and behave? Who can we trust as we look into an uncertain future? And yet Isaiah lives in a time of war. The Assyrians are attacking with their enormous armies. What will the future bring? Isaiah responds analytically. He uses past events to conclude that God is trustworthy. I'm quoting, from ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides us who works for those who wait for him. There is logic to human tragedy, Isaiah realizes as he's fact-checking history. People lose sight of God in their preoccupation with themselves. They enter into an existence when even their good deeds become tainted. I'm quoting. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. The iniquity Isaiah speaks of is not the result of some evil tempter, some devil or demon. It is of our own making. At such times, God seems absent to us. We are probably at our deepest, darkest point of existence when we are not even aware of God's absence in our lives. Isaiah the prophet never loses that keen sense of God's existence and therefore the longing of God's presence in his life. He knows that God is there somewhere and so he calls out to God in his desperation, I'm quoting, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. It is not difficult for us today to feel this call rise up from all those suffering from the wars in Ukraine, in Israel, Palestine, and other places of violence. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. That cry of desperation is good. It is a rallying call of the faithful, of the believers. An outcry of the woman or man certain of God's existence, even when the sense of being left alone may be all-consuming. It is also the cry of our Savior on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As Isaiah reflects on a world under threat, he turns to his faith in a reliable God, a father that will not abandon his children. And he reminds us to stand in awe and to be humble, in fact, even humbled before God. Our relationship with God is not shaped by our success, our wealth, our cleverness, or even our popularity. We are nothing, says Isaiah, but clay in the hands of a divine potter. What really makes us so special is not the clay, but the hands of God, who shape us, shapes our life. We are clay, but we are clay with a purpose, a purpose which God's own hands work into our very being. Those hands never stop holding us, and shaping us even in those dark moments when we cry for God to tear open the heavens and come down to us. Today, on this first Sunday in Advent, we celebrate what Isaiah was so desperately looking for. We rejoice in God coming down to us. Not in a tearing open of heavens, but in a way a true and divine potter would by putting a wonderfully formed baby in the arms of a young mother.
Father, let us pray for your church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to the nations in the coming of Christ, your Son. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, guide the work of your church. Help it to persevere in faith, to proclaim your name, and to bring your salvation to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for all Christian leaders, the ministers of your church within this diocese, for the church throughout the world, and for all Christian people. Lord, inspire us with your word. And help us to use this season of Advent to prepare humbly in our hearts for your coming at Christmas and for your second coming. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. Give wisdom to those in authority in every land and give to all peoples a desire for righteousness and peace and the will to work together in trust. We bring before you all those places in the world where people are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our let us pray for all who live and work within the city of London. We pray for the education and work carried out at St. Anne and St. Agnes, and for our link parish of the Incarnation Madison Avenue in the city of New York. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our let us pray that God, the Almighty Father, may bring comfort to those in distress, to the sick, the dying, and the troubled. We pray particularly at this time for Estella Jackson, Jenny Crusher, John Ross, Andrew Russ, Paula Heath, Diana Mount Evans, Ella O'Connor, Janet Phillips, Janet Fitzgerald, Casarano Castro Barber, Sylvia Clark, Maureen McClure, and for all others who have requested our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all who mourn, that they may be comforted by the Holy Spirit. We pray for any known to us who are recently departed, and for those whose ears mind are cursed this week, and for the souls of all those who have worshipped here over the ages. Lord, in your mercy. And so rejoicing in the fellowship of our Lady, St. Vidas, St. Anne, St. Agnes, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love as we pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
fruit of thine and worth of human hands. It become for us the cup of So he fulfills your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan long ago and opened for us the way of salvation. So now we watch for the day, knowing that salvation will be ours, when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to you, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Pray. 
great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoice in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this wine, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God incarnate, Vidas, Nicholas, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Now is the time to wake out of sleep. 
for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The body of Christ. God of Christ. The body 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 of Christ. Let us pray. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful, 
as you await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Jesus shall reign wherever sun, the mystery of Jesus ages run. The kingdom stretch from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and wane no more. People and realms of every tongue Dwell on his love with sweetest song, and infant voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. Let him surround where'er he reigns, the prisoner leaps to loose his chains. The weary find eternal rest, and all the sons of want are blessed. Let every creature rise and spring peculiar honors to our King. Angels descend with songs again. And a repeat the song Amen. A couple of uh, quick notices. Um, we have both mince pies and polenta with our coffee after this service now. Mince pies courtesy of Bryanstone uh, Independent School and polenta courtesy of Host Cafe at St Mary Aldermary. After that, there's a PCC meeting, which will finish by 1.30, because at 2, we have carols round Brendan's. You are all invited and encouraged to attend, because it's a great occasion. Um, the church will remain open during the PCC meeting, so if you want to hang around the church, maybe grab a coffee, come back, and then we can all go around there together. It's about a half-hour walk, or we can get the tube to Brendan's. And looking forward this week, on Thursday, we have one of our Advent evenings where we will share in the rectory our favorite um, piece of music or place. And it's really about discussion and fellowship, you know, wine and wisdom, that sort of thing. So do come along, please. The Lord be with you and also with you. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Be it unto me according to thy word. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now to the hour of our death and dwell among us. Holy 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen.